Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail or consider the question, uh, what is a reflexive relation? Okay, so let's just keep in mind uh, to have a relation or to create a relation, a relation is created on a particular set. Okay, and a relation is simply a subset of a cross product. In our previous example, uh, we had a set that contains the values uh, 2, 4, and 7, and we constructed the cross product A cross A. We constructed A cross A okay, uh, through this particular technique of, uh, where we created a table. Uh, the domain values are listed down the first column, and the range values of the cross product are listed across the first row. So we had 2, 4, and 7. 2, 4, and 7, and the ordered pairs were 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 7, 4, 2, 4, 4, 4, 7, and 7, 2, 7, 4, and 7, 7. And what we did was we took all of those values and we trunned them inside a set. So we created a set that contained 2, 2, uh, 2, 4, and so on and so forth, up to 7, 7. Okay, and we said that that was A cross A. It was the cross product of the set A with itself. And we defined a relation to be simply a subset of this particular cross product. And we had some examples of relations. Uh, we had, let's say, R1 could be equal to uh, the set 2, 2, 2, 4, 4, 2, as an example. Uh, we had R2 was equal to the set 2, 2, 4, 4, and 7, 7. And we had our 3, which would be equal to, let's say, in our example, was 2, 4, 4, 2, 2, 7, and 7, 2. Okay. And that's what we had previously. And we also had the empty set, which was our 4, okay, which was equal to the empty set, because the empty set is a subset of this cross product, and the empty set is a subset of all sets. So the question that we have is, what is a reflexive relation? We know that each one of these particular sets, by definition, are relations, because they're subsets of the cross product. But out of all the possible subsets of a cross product that we can create, and we know that in this particular instance, there is, there's nine entries or nine elements in this cross product. The total number of uh, relations that we could create is given by 2 to the power of the cardinality of the set okay, that we want to create relations from. Well, it's 2 to the power of 9, as those nine elements was 512. So we can continually select subsets from this set of nine values, or nine, nine entries, nine elements, and we could select 512 unique ways of creating sets. So there's 512 relations. But we're only interested in certain relations out of them 512. The rest we'll call boring relations. And one of the types of relations that we're interested in is reflexive relations. And we have a little definition of what a reflexive relation is. Okay. So a relation a relation or okay, on a set A okay, is reflexive it's reflexive okay, uh, if if X X is an element of R okay, okay, uh, for every for every X that's for every, sorry, every x, that's an element of our base set. Okay. Now I know that's only a few words there, okay, it forms this particular sentence. But let's just re re recap on this. So a relation or, so some relation, okay, that's been constructed from a set A, so we had a set A, we constructed its cross product, we took a subset from there, which gave us our relation, okay? Well, we say it's reflexive if xx is an element of R for every x that's in A, okay? So this is the only definition where we go back to the base set that the relation has been constructed on, okay? And we ask ourselves the question, okay, so for every element, we construct the ordered pair xx, so in this situation, we construct the ordered pair 2, 2, 4, 4, 
seven seven and if the relation is reflexive we would expect to find in the relation the values two two four four seven seven and it has to be true for every x so for example when we look at the cross product really what we're saying is this is that all the values down the main diagonal okay or all the entries down the main diagonal have to be contained in our relation so considering the first relation r1 r1 contains 2 2 2 4 4 2 so it contains 2 2 that's good but it must also contain 4 4 and 7 7 and it doesn't contain 4 4 and 7 7 so I can give you two reasons why this relation is not reflexive it doesn't contain 4 4 and it doesn't contain 7 7 let's have a look at R2 R2 contains the values 2 2 4 4 7 7 actually R2 contains everything down the main diagonal so R2 by definition is reflexive okay so this is not reflexive okay this is reflexive okay and what about this R3 well once again if R3 is reflexive it needs to contain for every x that's in our set it needs to contain the ordered pair xx so it needs to contain 2 2 which it doesn't it needs to contain 4 4 which it doesn't and it needs to contain 7 7 which it doesn't so just three reasons why this particular set or tree is not reflexive so that's not reflexive okay and clearly the empty set doesn't contain any of these particular values yeah, so that's also not reflexive okay let's just keep in mind that a relation or on a set a in other words it's taken from the cross product a cross a okay, it's a subset of the cross product a cross a is reflexive if we have the ordered pairs xx in r for every x that's in a another way to say that is for every x that's in a we have the ordered pair xx is in the relation Okay guys, I hope that particular video or this short video uh, helped us in our understanding of what is a reflexive relation. The next video is going to deal with what a symmetric relation is. So it's a symmetric relation. Okay, okay guys, thank you for your time. Uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.